Hi viewers, this is Dr. Muhammad Abtikhar Aslam. Uh, today I'm going to present my lecture on uh, Skew Worm Myasis. Skew Worm Myasis is caused by the larva of the family Califloridae, Chrysomia basiana, which is also known as Old World Skew Worm, and uh, Cochleomia homniovorax is also known as New World Skew Worm. The New World Skew Worm is uh, found only in the Western Hemisphere, particularly in the tropical regions, while the Old World Skew Worm is the only Eastern Hemisphere. Any warm-blooded animal, including humans, is susceptible to the infection. However, Skew Worm myosis is rarely seen in birds. Any open wound can become infected and uh, is often characterized by a full smelling uh, exudate and the presence of larva within the tissue. Reports of the New World Skew Worm date back to the 1852. Eradication efforts became successful with the development of the sterile nail technique. Sterile males are released to prevent the females flying from uh, depositing fertile eggs. The United States was declared free of skewworm in 1966. However, infection was still an issue due to recurring cases uh, from Mexico. The United States formed an uh, agreement with Mexico in 1972 to eradicate skewworm from, from that country. A uh, necessary step to completely prevent the skewworm infestation in the United States. Mexico was declared free of uh, skewworm in 1991. The eradication program was extended through the Central America to create a permanent barrier to reinfestation. Current eradication efforts are focused on Panama and uh, include the establishment of a sterile fly rearing facility. Skewworm is still present in Caribbean island and portions of South America necessitating strict control measures. Morbidity varies between the regions but can nearly 100% in favorable environments. In some areas, the navel of uh, almost every newborn animal can be infested. Mortality is dependent on a number of egg depositions and uh, the treatment of such infestations. If only one egg deposition occurs or if uh, the egg infection is really treated the mortality is usually very low however if wounds are left untreated and uh, multiple fly oviposits occur affected animals often die within 7 to 10 days as a result of secondary infection or toxicity the transmission occurs when a female fly deposits eggs in a superficial wound. One female can lay up to 400 eggs at a time. After hatching, the larva burrow into the flesh. The larva feed on the living tissues. They do not feed on the dead tissues. For several days before uh, dropping into the ground to Pupate. The adult skew worms emerge and uh, are ready to mate within, uh, within three to five days, beginning the cycle again. Infected uh, wounds attract other female flies and uh, multiple infestations often occur. It is not contagious between uh, animals. Flies are transmitted to non-endemic countries often through importation of the in infected animals. Any wound can become infested by skew worms. The larva emerge from uh, eggs within 8 to 12 hours and begin feeding. 
the initial uh, infection is difficult to observe as there is a little movement of the larva as the larva feed the wound enlarges and become deeper there may be hundreds of larva within the wound uh, within 3 days the larva are usually visibly embedded in the wound and a bloody discharge develops there is often a distinct full odor associated with the wound occasionally the wound may not be obvious but there will be a small opening in the skin with the pockets of uh, larva beneath the in affected animals usually exhibit signs of depression goes off feed and uh, separates itself from the herd the animals often rub against the trees lick the wounds and uh, stand in the water in an attempt to relieve the discomfort the death can occur in untreated infestations lack of treatment attracts other females and uh, results in multiple infestations lesions may extend into the body cavities and uh, lead to associated pleuritis sinusitis or peritonitis death is usually the result of secondary infections and toxicity smaller animals are more susceptible to the effects of uh, infestation stewom myosis should be suspected when clinical signs are observed differential diagnosis includes any flies that are capable of infesting wounds several types of larva may be present due to likelihood of multiple infestations larva should be collected uh, from the deepest part of the wound as facultative larva may be present at the edges of the wound samples of larva should be obtained from uh, the animal before treatment is begun treatment consists of uh, topical application of uh, larvicide directly into the wound for 2 to 3 successive days doramectin can be used to prevent uh, further development of the larva present in the wound as well as those that may be subsequently deposited spraying or dipping animals within an organophosphate insecticide such as kumafos uh, will also provide uh, protection against the reinfestation once the wound is cleared of the infestation any larva that are removed from wounds should be destroyed immediately infested uh, wounds should be cleaned with an approved larvicide to destroy any larva that were not removed organophosphate insecticides are effective against the newly hatched larva in immature larva and adult flies these can be applied by dipping or spraying methods no vaccine is available against skewworm myosis well that's the end of our today's lecture thank you so much